Thank you so much for joining us today. A lot of innovative businesses are seeking to reduce IT infrastructure costs as well as improve IT agility and reduce IT complexity to, through storage virtualization. So today in this interview, we will look at how CIOs can better leverage storage virtualization and deal with some of the problems that arise uh, from virtualization and essentially make, make for a problem-free virtualization journey. Uh, we have with us Subram Natarajan, the director of the System Solutions Center with IBM India. Uh, Subram, let me start out by asking you, what is the current status of storage virtualization in Indian enterprises? What are some of the pain points that are making Indian enterprises look at storage virtualization? Uh, well, uh, thanks for having me here, first of all. And, uh, this is a, um, uh, we are at actually a very interesting juncture, if you will. Uh, if you roll back uh, a couple of years ago, we were at a uh, very extensive growth phase where enterprises in India are uh, growing rapidly. Um, during that process, uh, the compute power as well as storage has gone through major metamorphosis in terms of uh, expanding vastly, if you will. All of a sudden, with a change in the economic scenario, people are pushing a lot more into optimization, cost optimization that is. How do I reduce my operational expenditure? And that's where the virtualization comes in and it, it, all of a sudden IT heads, CIOs are beginning to realize that this is a viable opportunity for them to introduce this technology which gives them a tremendous advantage both in terms of um, helping them be flexible at the same time tackle their operational expenditure problem. So uh, from an Indian enterprises uh, perspective, uh, this has gained traction pretty much in all sectors, mainly because of all the advantages that it provides uh, and, and the pain points that it alleviates. Okay, so essentially it helps reduce IT complexity and simplifies IT architecture. That, that's one of the main advantages uh, for CIOs. Mm -hmm. all right. What about, um, how does storage virtualization really impact uh, business continuity as well as uh, uh, information lifecycle management is a very big buzzword uh, today among CIOs, especially in the information and storage space. How does storage virtualization impact these? If I were to kind of go one level up and say what are the different benefits that one gets out of storage virtualization? Clearly it is, as you rightly said, optimization in the form of um, um, utilizing the assets much better. The second biggest advantage that you get out of storage virtualization is that of availability. And that's when the business continuity and life cycle management ties in. And of course the third one is associated with the simplicity in terms of management. So when we focus on the business continuity aspects, uh, the biggest challenge that people face today, IT organizations face today is, how do you keep growing along with the rapid growth of business, number one, and number two, Changes that are happening as a result of business decisions, mergers and acquisitions are a great example, which has profound impact on the way that IT is laid out. So when such a activity is happening, or it could be um, um, act of nature, you know, floods and earthquakes and so on, uh, all of these happening, while all of these are happening, how do we make sure that IT infrastructure provides a continuous service to our end users, customers? Virtualization is a clear uh, technology which will allow you to continue your operations while this movement of assets, that is data assets, is going on. And similar concept can be extended to um, unplanned outages as well. And that's where the business continuous come in. Uh, virtualization provides that layer. In terms of life cycle management, um, moving old data um, it has always been the, you know, the forefront of any IT head's uh, um, uh, thought. Now virtualization will allow you to have multiple storage devices and move about the data while the resources are being accessed at all times. And by tying in the policies, that of business, whatever business wants, it helps us um, integrate IT and business very well with each other. In India especially, uh, there are also some compliance issues when it comes to virtualization, especially in the BFSI sector where the regulator mandates that uh, you got to, data needs to be stored on a physical server, etc. What do you have to say about that and how does that really impact? I think um, what has traditionally been happening is um, IT uh, um, heads continue to um, have storage as a monolithic device and when compliance issues come in, when uh, there is a requirement that thou shall store data for extended periods of time, say five years and so on, um, it makes extremely difficult for uh, the IT leaders 
to um, construct an architecture whereby the cost optimization can be achieved. The old data which fits into the compliance bucket gets stored in an expensive storage array. And virtualization comes in and say, well, you can have your expensive storage device which gives you the biggest performance or best performance um, uh, for your production applications. At the same time, the data associated with compliance can be stored in a lower cost storage device. So even though there are two different storage devices, virtualization as a technology will put them together and make it appear as if it is one. That is the abstraction of physical layer brought into uh, one, uh, oneness, if you will, at the virtual layer. So compliance data, um, uh, first of all, movement of compliance data and storing them in a low cost storage devices. So you hit, you know, both, uh, both these with one stone here. What are the security challenges that storage virtualization throws up for, for CIOs and how do they really deal with some of these challenges? Yeah, in terms of security, um, storage virtualization per se does not offer any more or less challenges than traditional storage devices. Um, traditionally, uh, uh, security related challenges associated with uh, storage has been um, do we have access to the data that we want, that we need to? and nobody else has access to the data that they don't need to. And the second thing is even if you gain access through um, illicit means, um, are you, uh, is the data readable? Or is it, can you decipher something from, uh, from the data that is there already in the media? And this is where the focus of uh, security has been and virtualization does not add more or less to the complexity. Um, and you know, t today we have various uh, technologies associated with the networking, which allows people to kind of build a fence around the the storage uh, area that they should be focusing on, and not anybody else have access to that. And then technologies associated with encryption, disk encryption, tape encryption allows um, uh, IT heads to ensure that even if somebody gains access to the data, they won't be able to decipher the content. So uh, that that uh, is gaining a lot more importance these okay. days. Yeah. Tell me, how does storage uh, virtualization really enable green IT uh, for businesses? Yeah. So storage virtualization, in my view, um, forms sort of a heart of uh, uh, green IT as far as storage is concerned. So does the uh, cloud also. So let's talk a little bit about the green IT aspect of it. And I mentioned earlier on that virtualization gives you the capability to optimize your, uh, your IT infrastructure. By logically putting them together or virtualizing, you um, get the advantage of making sure the utilization of the cumulative set of disks or storage arrays is optimal. And by induction, you can have lesser amount of total storage because you have optimized. So therefore, immediately you gain advantage of uh, savings in terms of power and tile space or real estate space as far as green, green IT is concerned. When you turn towards cloud, which is another uh, buzzword as you rightly said that is happening, um, uh, it's all about um, provisioning on demand, right? So when you talk about um, um, consumers of cloud um, asking for a specific set of compute as well as storage capacities, for their workload, um, have, are, are we in a position to um, provide those storage capacities on demand? So, f um, for example, uh, if you have a particular storage device, a monolithic storage device, and uh, a user comes in and say, I want X amount of terabytes of storage device. If the storage device doesn't have that extra capacity, we have no choice today but to go for additional disks. So virtualization breaks these shackles easily by pooling the resources from everywhere else in the, in, the, uh, in the organization. It gives you that extra capacity that's available. So when I make a demand, automatically the virtualization finds out where the extra capacity is and provisions it. Now this cloud working with virtualization enables this. That's where the, the virtualization comes so into play. So basically storage virtualization is a very important building block uh, for the cloud. Absolutely. It is the basic building block okay. of cloud. We need to take a break right now, but when we come back, we're going to deal with some issues like ROI from virtualization as, as well as look at some very nice virtualization case studies. So don't go away. We'll be back in some time.